testing out the Sony's low light capabilities. But yeah, anyways, I'm out here in Santa Monica with Steve Snaps. Hey. We're, we are out here, um, about to shoot at the pier. I'm gonna be doing day three or four, this should be, of Polaroid week. And I'm gonna be taking some night photography on Polaroid with my One Step Plus. So let's see how this goes out. Hold it. Stop right there. Before we get into my third video for Polaroid week, let me reiterate, this is my third video for the week. I know you're all here for tips on night photography, but I need the validation. So check those videos out if you haven't already. I have a review of the Polaroid One Step Plus, one of my first actual reviews on this channel, as well as a more experimental short that goes into six shots with the Polaroid SX70. So feel free to check those out or don't. For today's video, however, I'm gonna be joined by Steve Snaps as we take a midnight drive to the Santa Monica Pier for some uh, night photography. Yeah, I've actually been wanting to do a similar video for 35 millimeter, but as you saw from my last video, that's gonna have to wait. But hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Before you start crying for that broken light meter, don't worry, I got this uh, fancy pants new one that I purchased before my trip to San Fran which is why you're getting this video. As you may have guessed, I brought out my One Step Plus as I wanted to revisit those manual controls on that camera while also figuring out how to spot meter with this uh, light meter. Yeah, shut up. I know it's a bad idea, but that's why it pays to shoot instant film. It may take 15 to 30 minutes for a color film to develop, but you still get on location results. And just to let you know when you see it, based off some advice I got off the Polaroid subreddit, I'll be going two stops over the camera suggested settings. As for the shots with the Sekonic light meter, I just tried averaging the highlights and the shadows. Emphasis on the try. I'm definitely not an expert at this instant film thing, but I'm gonna be passing along what I know and give some helpful tips and general shooting advice for those of you looking to get some night shots with your Polaroid One Step cameras. This video will only really apply to One Step Plus cameras as they're the only instant cameras currently on the market that offer you full control, which you will need for these consistent results. I'm gonna leave a link though for a video by Analog Resurgence, great channel y'all need to check out by the way, where he does a deep dive into how to trick an SX-70 into doing long exposures. Don't, 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 don't go there right now though. I'm, I know I was talking a lot, but I'm actually about to start this video. Roll. Totally forgot to bring the boots today. Let's set up for that oh, shot though. You got a 50, right? Yeah. Okay, this should work. Should be about the same distance. I just found out that that hole for the tripod is actually plastic. I think I stripped it a little bit. I'm actually scared of shitless of roller coasters. Really? Yeah. Me too. Nice. Space Mountain. Never again. It's gonna say it's saying I'm like three spots overexposed. Down one. Should be about right, right? It is changing, so I'm gonna wait for a good moment. Cannon boys, we're on the house. Right. <laughs> oh, hey, that's interesting. Let's do that. So, this is my new light meter. I'm totally going to end up buying the other one again because this is super bulky. But for what I'm doing today, it should be good. Mm. Saying F8 F22. So this is gonna be metering for the highlights. And actually, no, fuck it. I'm gonna trust it. I'm gonna trust it. Let's see what happens. So instead of randomly shooting like I did the last time I used light meter, I'm gonna chill the fuck out and wait for these exposures to develop, which should take about 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, Steve here is gonna totally handle some shit. Long exposure time. Haven't done this for a couple years. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> Sorry. Getting a little too excited with transitions right now. All right, I've been, I've been learning from the film school of YouTube. Let's try that with Steve here. He has no idea what I'm trying to do right now. Let's try it again. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> so I totally fucked up those first shots. And I'm gonna tell you why right now. This is set to portrait mode. 
this one is definitely metered for the highlights with my Sekonic. And it comes out, but obviously there's no real shadow detail right here. Um, this one, I just don't like the yellows. Now I'm gonna get closer because I want that Ferris wheel to take up more of the frame. Popo roll through. Yes, I think we're good. I think we're good. New plan. We're gonna do four stops off that guy. So this one was at four seconds. F12. For that guy. It says three, three stops over. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna explain this before it happens. I'm gonna take one shot at the suggested two seconds at F32, and then I'm gonna overexpose one stop for the second shot right away in quick succession. I'm just waiting for that to be a solid color that I actually like, not yellow, because yellow is gross. Once they, they, don't, they don't turn off. Hopefully they don't. So we are now up here in the pier. And I really want to look at the photos to check my metering. Because I'm up here and I want to take some photos of that. But I can't because I need to wait. Because we already saw what happened when I'm impatient. <sighs> I mean, we've got all the time. In the world. We do. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to go ahead and take a shot right now. I'm going to use my Sekonic though. I was doing so good, and I accidentally shot two of those on accident. Alright, let me redo that because I was talking to the camera while it was off. But these next few shots, I'm going to shoot metering off the camera instead of the Sekonic. And I'm going to be using a tripod. And I'm going to be metering at zero. Metering at zero using the manual app. I'm going to shoot here, try to get some shots. Light's already gone there, so... I'm gonna try to get some shots of the stores before they close and then call it a day. Get some food after. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again to Steve for coming out. I'm gonna put Instagram right here, and then however his shots came out, if he developed, actually he's not gonna develop it in time not in for time Wednesday's time. video, yeah. But check out his Instagram for those shots. I just spent two packs. First one was shot within the frame of an hour or two. <laughs> in this last for one photo. Yeah, and then this last one was just all pretty much metered through the camera and shot within 30 minutes. As soon as the cops were around, I brought out the tripod. I just snuck some shots. Oh yeah, um, all right. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for everyone sticking around to the end. As mentioned earlier, this was my third video for Polaroid Week. So if you're just stumbling onto this channel now and are interested in some more instant photography, feel free to check those other videos out. I know there wasn't much B-roll this time around. As you can see, my tripod was occupied and I was pretty focused on the photography. But anyways, um, thanks again, Steve, for coming out. I know it was pretty late, but Hey, we got some shots. I'm gonna end this video with a general overview of what I learned on this shoot. For those of you who just wanna skip to the tips, skip to the tips. So what did I learn tonight? Uh, number one, don't overthink your photos. As I mentioned in my One Step Plus review, although I did have a lot of issues with this film, most of it can be boiled down to me overthinking my shots. 
As you saw in the beginning, I spent a good amount of time trying to calculate everything for those first few shots. Juggling a new and unfamiliar light meter as well as a metering system with a beginner's understanding of this film. Which led to a few okay shots but was still important considering I was able to figure out how to get the look I was going for. I think that much is obvious considering how quickly I shot through that second pack. So as Cynthia would say, just go out there and shoot. Obviously, I was a bit nervous about overexposing this film after what happened in my review of this camera, but for these shots of the neon signs and street lights, I found that metering at plus two EV um, off the camera's meter worked pretty well. I could have probably done plus one or even zero, but I have no idea what it do to my shadows considering this film doesn't seem to hold it very well. My later shots weren't exactly sharp as well, though I'm not sure if that's due to any possible overexposure or my f-stop being at f12. Also, as you can see by a couple of photos, Hand holding really isn't suggested. I still want to do some experimenting using my new Sekonic light meter. Since I do see some potential there, I just need to understand how to properly use it. Again, this video is mostly an experiment on shooting night photography with Polaroid since I've seen so little information on the topic, even though this camera has been out for almost half a year now. So if you caught any mistakes or have some advice, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm definitely gonna do an update as soon as I get more experience. Also, I'm a bit curious about this film's reprosity failure since it seems like I was starting to get some weird results around four seconds, though that may have been due to how the lights were reflecting off the lens since it's still plastic. Also, the top third half of the frame also had this weird cut with some of the shots. Uh, not sure what that was about. Also, keep in mind, this camera's widest aperture is f12, so a tripod is advised. Just uh, be careful how you carry those tripods at night, considering there's stories out there about them being mistaken for weapons. I know it's a bit uncomfortable to talk about, but I just want to keep you all safe. Also, as I mentioned in my review of this camera, it's mostly plastic, including the part where you attach the tripod, so be careful not to strip it as I almost did on the shoot. Other than that, please feel free to shoot me any questions on the topic down below or uh, DM me on Instagram. I'm usually pretty good at responding, though my knowledge on long exposure Polaroids is limited at the moment. Anyways, I hope you all got some good info from this considering how little info I was able to get on the subject. Though I do recommend checking out the Polaroid subreddit for both inspiration and general advice from the community. Anyways, thank you again for watching. Please consider picking up some prints on the website and uh, support this channel as well as me. And uh, don't be afraid to start some conversation down below. It would make me so happy. I don't even care how pathetic that sounds. Until the next video, which will hopefully be 5 p.m. tomorrow, uh, keep chasing the light. I know I was probably doing a lot of this on video, but uh, that's just who I am. Why do you think the Instagram handle was Fox is Strange? Follow. Bye.